Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Oracle Open World 2015. This is The Q, and I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Here with a wrap up for day one here on the exposition floor. Happy to have back on the program the guy that helped us uh, at the top of the hour uh, was uh, Jim McHugh, who's the VP of UCS Product and Solution Marketing. Jim, welcome back. Thanks for having me. This All is right. great. Well, well, thank you for having us. Cisco, great booth here, right, I mean, in the front of the show floor. Great energy at this show. I mean, the booth's been going nonstop. Uh, I don't know what you guys are giving away, but it uh, seems everybody's lining up for the hats and the hats. some of the other the pieces. The hats. Hats. What people won't do for hats. You know, I, I, I wonder, you've got a strong partnership with the Red Hat. You know, you guys have got to figure some cross-promotion on the hat, because I feel, I mean, everybody loves the Red Hat hat, but I, I think I got this, that same hat back in 2002. Yes. Uh, so. Well, I mean, but you can't wear the Red Hat hat really out in public too much. Our hat you can. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I got a chance to walk the show floor. I've been talking to some people. We've had some great interviews here on theCUBE. Uh, and, you know, it's real clear that kind of the, the, the top topic of the week is cloud. And especially, you know, Oracle came out with some really strong messages. So, what's your opinion so far of what you've heard from Oracle? And how does that jive with uh, kind of your view of the world? Well, there's some differences. Um, the idea that there's only going to be two clouds in, in 10 years is probably not something that a lot of our partners are signing up for as, as, as they run some cloud activities. I, you know, and I personally believe there are going to be many different clouds. Uh, that I'm subscribed to that because I think as we start maturing, there's going to be specialized clouds. And the specialized clouds are going to be able to do things better than some of the generic clouds. So, I don't know who the second cloud Larry was referring to, but I, I, you know, is it Microsoft or Amazon in his opinion? That, that's TBD, but I wouldn't bet against uh, some of the other things that are coming along. Yeah, uh, you know, two, two clouds is tough for, for, yeah. for me to swallow too. I, I feel like I went to the show AWS reInvent, yeah. it felt pretty real. Yeah. Um, I saw Satya Nadella last week talking with Dell, yeah. and you know, Microsoft, we ran the numbers on it. <laughs> According to Wikibon's numbers, I mean, Oracle, they're a player. I mean, they're a top 10 yeah. cloud company, yeah. but they're, you know, some people throw out, you know, what percentage of the cloud do they have? It's like, ah, 2% is Oracle. So yeah. it's pretty bold for you to come out when you're, you know, kind of 2% and say like, well, it, it's kind of moving out. It's their show, it's their time to be bold. That's the way I read it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, 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 what's Cisco's position on the cloud? Uh, you know, intercloud um, is, you know, truly, really, there, there's some partnerships with this ecosystem, there's some stuff you own. Um, you know, how does Cisco position that in, in that ecosystem? So Cisco has actually been focusing on developing cloud services, but some of those will run, some of those our partners will run. I mean, there's some really great cloud services I mean, I, I don't know if we talked about it before, but I was talking about it with some of your colleagues about Dimension Data's cloud and what they're doing, you know, and it's really cool solutions like around the Tour de France. Yeah. Very particular, right? I mean, that's a specific solution that they can then build up from there. Um, Major League Baseball, their service providers at a cloud, I don't know, but they sure offer it to other people, right? NHL, Masters, March Madness, political campaigns, that's a service, right? Yeah. Along the lines of salesforce.com. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I try not to get hung up too much on the definitional piece. It's like, wait, you know, it's some service that's available globally, usually, and we might have some licensing issues for some people accessing it, uh, but it, it's about, uh, you know, enabling the business to do things that, that they couldn't do. Yeah. It's agility, it's flexibility, it, it's, uh, you know, the changes that we can make. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's fundamentally, difference from the way I, I used to kind of, you know, consume and report to uh, the business uh, well, for example, on how we like do things. If you have a generic based cloud, or, or, an, or a cloud that's really great at running Oracle, that's not going to be the same cloud you're going to go to if you actually want to do real-time analytics. Where I actually want to be able to point an analytics engine at some data and be able to use it at a cloud base. It's, it's a different cloud. It just is. And I actually think that that type of cloud is really going to take off. That I just want to actually do complete, you know, data science, but I don't actually want to run everything. Yeah. And that's going to be a different sort of solution. Yeah, well, one of the things that's been kind of crystallizing in my mind is if you look at hybrid cloud, so much of it was like, I don't know if it's hybrid, because people have lots of pieces of cloud. They've got SaaS applications, they've got their different environments. Oracle's the definition of what the enterprise cloud is, is pretty clear. Here's the Oracle stack, here's what you can have in-house, in yep. and here's what you can have in their enterprise public cloud. Uh, Microsoft has their hybrid view of things. AWS, very heavy in the public. You know, Cisco, 
obviously from a networking standpoint, plays kind of everywhere. Yeah. Uh, from a UCS standpoint, you know, wh wh where do you see kind of the rest of the data center portfolio fitting into uh, the kind of that cloud landscape? So, I'm again, so we'll be looking at multiple ways of doing the cloud. We're heavy in the private cloud. Yeah. We actually think, you know, whether you look at an example like Zynga or any company that does really well, they're going to want to bring it back and manage it locally. It just, it just seems that way. So I think there's going to be some, quite some time where that's actually going to keep playing out. So we talk about what's going to move to the cloud, quote unquote, and I think when, with some of the statistics we were hearing from Mark Hurd and Larry yesterday were more focused on public cloud, a cloud run by someone else. And you know, I think that could be, but I, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's yet to be proven. Any predictions that are 10 years out are always open to interpretation and you get to reinvent what you really meant five years from now. Yeah, Jim, when Cisco first got into the UCS business, everybody said, you know, they're crazy. The margins on servers are so thin and, you know, UCS gets pretty good margins. Yeah. And you look at the discussion in the marketplace today, I think people overhype a little bit some of the white box pieces. Uh, we, we see, uh, you know, the, the server manufacturers, sure there's pressure from the ODMs, but many of them are holding strong. How does Cisco kind of maintain margins, uh, you know, add value to customers, and, you know, not, not get squeezed down by some of the other well, competitors again, if out you, there? Again, if you have a really strong customer focus, you realize that the cost of the data center is not the hardware. It's the software and it's the people time to manage. And if you can actually help companies manage that better, it's going to be so much more. Whether it's like saving the poor guys that used to have to get under the, the boards and run cables all the time because our cabling is so much better to allowing you to spin up servers and make that much so much better. But I actually think it's a contrarian. I do not believe that we're going commodity. I actually think compute's going the other way. I think some of the things we're going to start seeing with the value of compute is going to go increase. You know, this whole throw it away, uh, you know, it's, it's the anti-Tesla model. Why would you actually want to throw out, you know, build a whole data center and let it fail and just throw all the stuff parts away? No, that, people are not going down that route. They want quality and they want to actually keep adding more compute capacity where they need it. Yeah, well, well Jim, I, 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 th I think uh, it might be countercultural what you're talking about, but you know, the research that we've been doing kind of proves you right. When we dig into what Amazon's doing, it's not that they just put the same thing out there. They hyper-optimize for their applications sure. in their environment. Uh, you know, w w when you look at you know, Oracle, of course, with their cloud, they're going to really optimize uh, what, what they're doing here. So uh, it, there is specialization, there is value in there. Heck, even you know, Docker, I mean, virtualization was supposed to make servers yeah. you know, not matter that much, and people were like, well, Docker and containers are going to do that and more. DockerCon this year, what was the discussion? Oh, it was the networking and storage you know, integrations that need to make sure that underneath it works because at the end of the day, it's not just that that stuff doesn't just you know show up and work, and I buy the cheapest stuff up right. there. It needs to you know it that adds integration value. is super yeah, important. Yeah. Putting together that solution is super important. And there's a cyclical. And I think there's I'll have to give a there. shout out to the Solaris guys in the back because they were doing containers a lot longer than most people. I mean, I know it's the next generation of containers, but that's how our industry works, right? We we keep cycling around, we keep doing it better the next time, and we keep making advances. All right, uh, so Jim, give me the final word on uh, day one here uh, at Oracle Open World. Uh, you know, what, what do you think we're going to be walking away from this show uh, as kind of the talking points? Uh, well, I think at all the cocktail parties tonight, everybody's going to be talking about cloud and the various different interpretations of cloud. A lot of customers are asking what's the right thing for them, and I think there's going to be some good discussions on that. So that's what I'm looking for as we hit some of the dinners later tonight. What is the right cloud for you? What is the right solution for you? And, and really walking with through with that with our customers. All right, well Jim, thank you for coming back. I look forward to catching up with you more later this week. Lots more coverage here from the Cube team. Go to siliconangle.tv to catch all the videos. We have two more days of programming coming from here on the exhibition floor. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we will see you next time.